I'm gonna break down how I use Notion as a software engineer and give you three templates that will make you much more productive and organized. A little about me, my name's Aman. I worked at a bunch of companies like Amazon and Shopify, and now I'm currently a software engineer. Okay, first of all, what is Notion and why is it actually worth using? Notion is essentially a note-taking app, but it's so much more than that. You can write notes, obviously, but it's really great for project planning, pasting long snippets of code, saving resources, and building up this personal documentation over time that you can address over the next five to 10 years. And the reason why Notion is special compared to other note-taking apps is the complete and utter customizability of it. So when you create a Notion account, you can basically create your entire system, entire workflow, and it's completely up to you. Other note-taking apps force you to conform to either like a notebook approach or some kind of like mind map web approach, whereas Notion is almost like an architect building a building. You create your entire structure from scratch and it's completely up to what you want. It's by far the best note-taking and project management app. Nothing even comes close to it. And anytime I want to create a new project or venture, I immediately go into Notion and create a whole new setup just for that. So I would definitely recommend signing up for Notion as soon as possible. And on that note, if you guys are going to sign up to Notion from this video, do that through the link in the description. It will help support the channel and help me bring better and better videos to you guys. And it's the same process regardless. All right, number one, the first system I use as a software engineer in Notion is called the daily log. The logic behind a daily log is that when you're a software engineer, you want to keep track of roughly what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And the main reason behind that is because of performance reviews. Something people don't realize is that when you're a software engineer, you'll go through regular perf or performance reviews probably every six to 12 months. And based on those reviews, you will be doled out return offers, promotions, bonuses. These performance reviews are incredibly important for being successful in ascending a company as a software engineer. And usually in those performance reviews, you have to justify or argue or even negotiate for that raise or promotion you want. You need to argue to your manager or boss that it's worth actually ascending you and that you're performing at a higher level than you're being compensated for. And it's a lot easier to do that when you have this solid stack of evidence of everything you've been working on for the last year or so. It's almost like you're a lawyer in court, right? You want to make an argument, but then when the judge asks you to explain, you want to present exhibit A, B, and C. The thing is that you as a software engineer have so much going on, you're so busy, and you're not going to be able to remember everything you worked on on a daily basis. I mean, let me ask you, how many of you guys can actually remember what you did two days ago, three days ago, last week? It's simply impossible to keep track of all these nuances of your daily routine, which is why I highly recommend keeping a daily log in Notion. It's also useful for your own productivity. So when you have a daily log, you can easily open this database and look back at the last few weeks or month and see what did you actually allocate your time to and can you make any improvements to that? I'm in my daily log template right now, as you can see, it's a very simple database. And something to summarize for this video is that all of my templates are not that complicated. And the reason behind it is that I want you guys to be able to create these on your own. Like I will offer all of these at amadmanazar.com slash notion for you to download and clone, but you guys should be able to make them on your own, especially if you understand notion. In this daily log table, we have topics, date, and tags. You can easily create a new page every day, set what the date is like this, pretty simple. Then go into your page, open it up. And then for the title, I usually recommend just writing some kind of summary of what you do that day. So let's say I'm working on project A, project A plus one on one. And those are just some things that you might be doing as a software engineer. Then I click daily log. That's like the default template here. And then you have some stuff to fill out for the page. So what I recommend is doing this in the morning at the beginning of the workday and also at the end of the workday. So as soon as you come into work, just go into your daily highlight, write down the number one thing you want to get done that day. The daily highlight is a practice that has been incredibly impactful for me because if you could isolate one thing to get done, the one thing you have to get done that day, it provides focus and direction and motivation. And think about it. If you complete one high leverage thing every single day, that kind of progress compounds over time and you end up making much more progress than you otherwise would. So I'll fill up my daily highlight. Then I'll go to the task list and write down five to 10 things I want to get done that day. This task list is more like a might do list than a to do list. And I usually rank them in terms of importance. Like what are the most important things I have to get done that day? And I know going in that I'm not going to get all of them done. Maybe I'll only get done with three to four of them, but it's nice to see what things I need to get done that day. And finally, at the end of the day, I will go into the recap portion. I will answer what did I accomplish today? What am I planning on doing tomorrow? Am I procrastinating from, from completing anything? And how can I make tomorrow even better? And again, you don't want to get caught up in writing 
detailed, extensive notes here. This is a daily practice, and to make it a consistent daily practice, you need to make it short and sweet. So spending more than five to 10 minutes total on this daily log is not worth your time. Just try to get the habit in and get it consistently done. Finally, you have the tags portion here. This is where you can add different projects or topics that you're working on. Like some example ones are Mac transition onboarding. Onboarding is like when you're joining a company and you might have some onboarding tasks. Mac transition is a project that my last company had where we were transitioning from using Linux to Mac. So we had to do a lot of work for that early on. Like I said before, you can grab this template at amonmanazer.com slash Notion. Notion system number two as a software engineer is personal documentation. Personal documentation is the act of building up a repository of your own personal notes that you can reference to help your work as a software engineer. And there are a few categories of personal documentation. One important one is those random one-off things that you have to do when you're coding. This could be some sort of iteration, could be like a series of terminal commands that you want to copy and paste every time. This could be some esoteric series of steps that you have to replicate maybe one to two months. And the main reason you want to write these down is because you don't want to keep bothering your team or manager and asking the same question over and over again for something that you could easily write down once and then just continuously reference. One aspect of a very productive software engineer is that they do build up these series of notes so that they don't unnecessarily take their team's time for trivial questions and answers. They can just easily access their personal documents documentation. Some other areas of personal documentation are languages and frameworks that you have to inevitably learn as part of the job. So during my role as a software engineer, I had to learn Golang and do some more JavaScript stuff. And for Golang or Go, I had no experience with it. So part of my personal documentation was watching some Go courses, watching some YouTube tutorials, reading through the Go documentation, and then building up my personal documentation while taking notes on how the language works, how you do certain things in the language. And then while I'm coding in Go as part of the job, especially early on, it's super easy to reference important things, important constructs, data structures, conditionals, types in Go. The third aspect of personal documentation is notes on the code base. So especially when you started a new company and throughout your time working at a company, you will be diving and exploring the code base. And the larger the company, the older the company, the more this will be the case. So when I was working at Amazon, I joined this team and there was this massive code base and I really had no idea how everything fit together. So a lot of that work there originally was diving to that code base, taking notes in my Notion setup about how different things fit together, how different systems work. So my work on those areas of the code base just got much more efficient after I was able to mind map and write it all down in this Notion page. Because of that, I have tons and tons of notes that I can always reference months later when I have to go make a change in that part of the code base. Because something you do as a software engineer is that you'll have some tasks, you'll complete some project, and then you'll push that code. And then you might have to go back and make an update to it two to four months later, because let's say you broke something in prod or there needs to be like an update to that code that happened all the time when I was working. It was so helpful when I took the effort initially to write down detailed notes on how that part of the code base works, because I could just go read those notes, spend maybe 30 minutes and just remember how everything works and that I could go in there and surgically change something. And if I didn't have this documentation, it would take me hours just rereading the code, trying to re-understand and relearn how things worked. And finally, the fourth aspect of personal documentation is that it makes it so much easier to train new employees or teach other people at your company how certain aspects of the code base work. So something that is not talked about as a software engineer is that you will be working in a team and so much work you do is, is, is a collaborative process. People will be asking you questions, you'll be asking them questions. And when someone comes to you about some work you did six months ago, with a question about how something works or an update that needs to be made, it's really beneficial to be able to open that part of your notes and use that to guide your explanation and teaching to them. So all in all, personal documentation is a must and it's something that all of you guys need to start doing in Notion. Here's my personal documentation template in Notion. Obviously, very simple, very bare bones. Personal documentation doesn't have to be something that's incredibly organized. And the benefit of Notion is that something you can do here is just create a new heading for every single section of your documentation. So let's say I'm talking about aspect A of the code base, I can just make that heading there, then write all my bullet points. Notion has the ability to paste code here. So I can have like a code block where I can just like type anything there. Like it's set for Python right now. And then you can set a caption here, like example code block. And then you can see how example heading showed up in like the table of contents here. So at my company, I have dozens and dozens of these headings and subheadings in Notion, and I can use that table of contents to just jump around. Notion also has an incredible search feature. So you can just do command P, you can search through any, any of your pages in Notion, and it's super easy just to jump around, just to easily search and jump around pages in Notion. Before I get on to the final template, the final Notion system that I actually think is the most important part of using Notion as a software engineer, 
I want to touch briefly on how to get good at Notion, how to actually start using it if you're a beginner. Like I said, if you're going to sign up for Notion, use that link in the description to actually sign up. But once you sign up, I would not recommend going through really complicated, detailed, complex templates and just trying to fit into those. When you start with Notion, they're going to give you like dozens of these really detailed, complex templates. And it's very overwhelming. And the majority of people I talk to who can start with Notion often quit because their templates are too difficult to understand. So what I would recommend doing is opening your Notion account, just going through and deleting all the templates. Don't use any of the default stuff. Just create a blank new page and just treat it like it's a basic Word document. Like I said, at first, it will be like a Google Doc or Word document. You're not gonna have any fancy features, any fancy tables, databases, nothing, but that's fine. And then over time, you will be able to hit slash and just see all these different cool structures you can create in Notion. And you will organically understand how the platform works and build up your own resources and templates. Over time, you'll expand your Notion skills. And it's better just to grow slowly rather than get overwhelmed and quit. Finally, another great way to learn Notion is to watch a Skillshare class on it. Skillshare is the best way to learn anything new. They now have this new feature called Learning Paths. They've gone ahead and organized multiple classes together in order to enhance your learning even further. So if I wanted to learn Notion, I could watch the Supercharge Your Productivity with Notion Learning Path, which has five ordered classes, one from Ali Abdal and another from Cajun Koi Academy. This is super helpful because now you can take multiple classes together and each one builds off another one, which leads to far greater learning. There are so many new learning paths. Another one is called Grow Your First YouTube Channel, and it actually has a class from Nathaniel Drew on it as well. I actually used Skillshare way back in 2020 to start this very YouTube channel. I watched Ali Abdal's Final Cut Pro editing class and it completely changed my life. So if you want to use Skillshare to learn Notion, the first 500 people who click the link in the description will get a one month free trial. Make sure you move fast because it only applies to the first 500 people who click. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and back to the Notion setups. So the final Notion system that I think is actually the most important Notion template as a software engineer is project descriptions. This is when you're assigned a new project that's scoped to maybe two to six months long. And this template lets you store all of that information and details related to that project. I would define project descriptions as a subset of personal documentation, but it's the most important aspect of personal documentation, in my opinion. As a software engineer, your work is scoped to projects. So usually you'll get assigned a larger project and you'll have a series of maybe one to four projects every quarter, depending on how detail oriented and time intensive they are. And as soon as you get assigned that project, you will need to go into Notion and talk to the stakeholders, talk to the product manager, talk to your manager, talk to the senior software engineers, and just fully understand what the bounds and requirements of this project are. And the key here is that you're going to want to write that stuff down. Because when you're spending hundreds of hours on this project, you want like a base to be able to address over time rather than constantly having to go and re-ask the senior software engineers, the managers, how things work. Here's my project database table. When you create a new project, you'll add the name of the project there. You'll add the areas of code here. So this is like a multi-select so you can like add your new areas there. Then you can add dates. So I'd recommend adding a start and end date for the project. It'll probably be between one to two months on average, but obviously it'll shrink and expand based on how detailed the project is. Then when you go in here, you can open this, use the default project template to create a new page. And finally here you have the overview of the project. So the overview of the project usually initially occurs as soon as you assign the project. So they'll be talking to the senior engineers, your managers, the stakeholders, and they will give you a description of the project, which you can write down here. After you have like the high level description, you'll go through and add the completion criteria. The point of this completion criteria is that it's a detailed series of steps that you brain dump on the first week of working on a project that you could actually go back and reference and follow over the months as you're delving into actually implementing this code. And this has been extraordinarily helpful for me because a lot of work on this project happens in the first week where you have all these massive ideas, you're talking to all these different people, and they're all giving you input when it comes to implementation, when it comes to design, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really important to write that completion criteria there so you can reference it over the next coming weeks. And finally, as people are sending you resources, links, URLs, links to the code base, you'll wanna add the, all of that stuff into the notes category. And the point of notes is that, again, it's very free flow. None of this is super organized. The point is that you just want to be able to brain dump resources and notes and links and URLs that you wanna access later on so that you have a place to actually go back and look at that. Like I said before, you can get all of my templates at imamanazar.com slash Notion, completely for free, or hit the link in the description. I even have a template there for coding interviews, and I also have all of my Notion notes from college. So if you're interested in reading through all of those, those are completely for free as well. 
And finally, I said it before, but if you guys are gonna sign up for Notion from this video, do it through the link in the description. It'll support the channel. It'll help me bring better and better videos for you guys. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.